The day I visited the town of Eisenach, it rained. But don't let that put you off because it is well worth a visit. Just keep an eye on the weather forecast. Eisenach lies in the state of Thuringia, just on the eastern side of what was once the Iron Curtain. In fact, it was so close that parts of it were inside a restricted area that could only be entered with a special permit. Many centuries before that, of course, the town was completely surrounded by its own wall. Few traces of it remain, but one gate still stands, the St Nicholas Gate, the oldest surviving city gate in Thuringia. It was built in the 12th century, at the same time as the neighbouring St Nicholas's church. Unfortunately, it was closed when I was there, but if you look closely, you can see the symbol of one of Eisenach's most famous residents. A better clue is the statue opposite. It is the architect of the Reformation, Martin Luther, the man who defied the Catholic Church and created a new religious movement. As a schoolboy, he lived in Eisenach for a few years, apparently here, as a guest of the influential Cotta family. This is possibly Thuringia's oldest surviving timber-framed house, and it now has a museum. Luther lived here while he was studying at this school in preparation for university. It was built next to what was a Dominican monastery church, now a museum of sacred carvings. He returned 20 years later, but not willingly. Following his excommunication, his ally, Elector Frederick the Wise, staged his kidnapping and brought him here, to the Wartburg, for his own safety. He hid here from his enemies and translated the New Testament into German in just a few weeks. Three hundred years previously, the Wartburg had been home to Elizabeth of Hungary before and during her marriage to Louis IV of Thuringia. She died aged only 24, but such had been her charitable works that just five years later she was made a saint. An example of why can be found in the woods below the castle. Follow these signs and go down this path and you find yourself in this clearing. Down some steps is where this story begins. A well was opened up here in the 12th century, although this well house was built in 1851. The water was for the Wartburg, but fresh water was ideal for looking after the sick, and so in 1225 Elizabeth built a hospital here. It's long since vanished. These stones were put here just a few years ago to show where the walls were. Another hundred years later, a Franciscan monastery was built next to it. Now, the whole area is a kind of shrine to Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. Back in town, Saint Elizabeth also has a church dedicated to her. She herself wouldn't have seen it, of course. Neither would she have seen Saint George's church in its present form, but she was married in the church that was here at the time. Later, Martin Luther preached here, and later still, Johann Sebastian Bach was baptised. He was born here, and today this house is a museum which features, among other things, an hourly concert played on period instruments.
Eisenach has many other interesting and photogenic things to see. One of these is what may be one of Germany's narrowest timber-framed houses, just slightly over two meters wide. But there is one site which is a complete contrast to everything else, and there is a clue to it in the railway station. This stained glass window, installed in 1966, celebrates the 70th anniversary of the car factory. During the Cold War period, this factory was most famous for the Wartburg, a car that was one step up from the Trabant for those privileged enough to get one. One corner of the factory is now a museum of Eisenach's car manufacturing industry. Most of the rest is either demolished or derelict. Luckily, the industry continues. A modern factory on a new site continues to employ nearly 2,000 people, although that's not nearly as much as the old factory employed. Still, at least it's something. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.